This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Good evening. Remember that David versus Goliath parable? Tamil Nadu's electoral battleground is all set to witness similar contests where the big wigs are challenged by greenhorns or at least those who are not considered even Stevens. From tomorrow, all of us in the media will be chasing the heavyweights as they hit the campaign trail. Karunanadi kickstarts his rallies in Thiruvarur on Wednesday and Ms. Jai Lalita begins her tour on Thursday. But before all that action unfolds, we decided to throw the spotlight tonight on the opponents of the big players. I'm Sanjay Pinto and I'm joined live by a young DMK candidate, Anand, better known as the rival of the AIDMK chief in Sri Rangam, and my colleagues, Radhika Ayer, senior editor, English News, and our reporter, Lok Priya. And that discussion comes up in about two minutes from now after the headlines with Evelyn. Thanks, Sanjay. Plenty of news brewing this Tuesday night. A quick scan of the headlines now. The Chief Election Commissioner warns that Tamil Nadu is infamous for money power compared to other states. Partisan behaviour led to transfer Tamil of top Nadu officers. Tamil Nadu has bigger money power uh, problem than other states. That's for sure. Arigiri slams the opposition-led alliance, says it's on a ventilator for the polls ahead. <laughs> Battle Round 2011 will see the young guns take on political heavyweights. Are these just token contests or will these fresh candidates throw up surprises? Has Amma proved her rivals wrong this election season by being more amenable with her allies? The centre rolls back the 5% tax on healthcare. NDTV Hindu gets you first reactions from the city's big hospitals. India, 80% of the people pay out of their pocket for healthcare expenses. This tax would have gone on added initial burden for them. The city Corporation puts on its election gear, four flying squads and separate queues for the elderly are introduced for the voters. We'll be printing uh, booth slips very soon and uh, the distribution will commence uh, probably by this month end. And he's a superstar with a golden heart. Rajnikanth plans a visit to the devastated Japan to help his fans and victims. Oh my God. Let's also bring you the rest of the day's top stories from national and international sections. Another earthquake of magnitude 6.6 on the Richter scale strikes Honshu in Japan. After his WikiLeaks reignited the cash for votes scandal, Julian Assange tells NDTV that India should investigate not to stop the records. In the Libyan operation, the United States wants to hand over the attack to NATO, but the Arab League is against it. In more troubles for Karnataka's Chief Minister, Yadirappa sources tell NDTV that 50 MLAs of anti-CM camp are plotting a rebellion. And the Bombay High Court reserves its order on Lalit Modi's appeal against the BCCI's Disciplinary Committee inquiry. Never before has an assembly election caught the attention of a gamut of people, a neck-and-neck -neck battle for the political parties in the state. The 14th assembly elections of Tamil Nadu is something to look out for. For its results might just alter political equations not only in the state but also off the centre. While it's back to the roots for the two veteran politicians, other heavyweights too have identified their safe havens. And away from the glitterati are a set of young and not very high-profile politicians who are pitted against these heavyweights. NDTV Hindu looks at some of the contests in the offing. Anand, an ordinary farmer's son, barely 28, is contesting against Jalalita for the Temple Town seat of Sri Rangam. Will he pull off a victory like E.G. Sugavanam did in 1996? A victory that made Karunanadi compare it to the feet of an ant entering an elephant's ear. Anand, a science graduate, is upbeat about winning on the DMK symbol. Kodavasal Rajendran is not a household name, but he is the AIDMK man pitted against Karnanadi in Tirvaru. In 2006, Karnanadi stood from the Chepok constituency and a young independent lost to him. But a youthful Rajendran is absolutely confident of taking on the DMK patriarch. <laughs> Candidate Nupor Rapet, Thrower La Kalinga Rikiran, 
அதுக்கு தகுந்த மாதிரி கேண்டிடேட் போடணும்னு நான் கொஞ்சம் நம்பிக்கையாகவும் உறுதியாகவும் துணிவாக செயல்படுவேங்கிறதுக்காக என்னை கூப்பிட்டு என் மேலே நம்ப நம் நம்பிக்கை வச்சு எனக்கு அந்த சீட்டை கொடுத்துருக்காங்க அந்த யங் டர்க் ஆஃப் தி டிஎம்கே எம் கே ஸ்டாலின் வில் பி டெஸ்டட் அகெயின் சைதே துரைசுவாமி a veteran aidmk soldier who runs ias coaching center for the poor both have moved out of the turf to the newly carved kolathur constituency stalin from thousand lights and dore swami from saida pet so we can expect interesting lessons there ur asaikka mudiyada shaktiyaga irpavar porachi thalavi amma avargalagum aagave dhan indraki avargaludaiya thalamayil inda yekam evvalavu periya sodhanaigalai sandithalum அது பீனிக்ஸ் பறவையை போல் அது என்றைக்குமே அவர்களால் காப்பாற்றப்பட்டு வருகிறது The man who calls himself Black MGR is in the dark about his contestant. This may be only his second election. But the actor is stouted as a game changer is likely to fight like a veteran. Bureau report NDTV Hindu. Well over to our executive editor English News Sanjay Pinto for the dynamics we are about to witness in the election spectacle we are headed for he's asking the big question tonight Thank you everyone as i said earlier we are joined live by Anand who is a candidate contesting from Sri Rangam against uh, Ms Jayalalitha there Anand romba uh, nandri ipo ammave edirthu nikkara vaippu kadichumbodhu எப்படி உணர்ந்தீங்க இது நான் வந்து ரொம்ப பெருசாக நினைக்க நினச்சிருக்கேன் நான் இது தலைவர் தளபதி எனக்கு பெரிய வாய்ப்பை கொடுத்துருக்காங்க எனக்கு அந்த வாய்ப்பு பயன்படுத்தி கண்டிப்பாக நான் வெற்றி பெறுவேன் All right let's also cross over to uh, Radhika Iyer my colleague senior editor English news and also we'll be joined by Lokpriya who's uh, been in fact reporting tracking all these developments from the DMK camp Radhika to you first a question that must be on the minds of many viewers a basic question Why is that we never witness a clash of the titans say Jayalalitha versus Karunanidhi or, or a Stalin versus Vijayakanth Well Sanjay I must say that uh, after all the excitement uh, in, on the 2nd of April with the World Cup I'm sure you're no, you're only greedy and wanting for all that more excitement and almost seeming that the that the big election will sound uh, like uh, as exciting as a 2020 match uh, but it would uh, wouldn't it considering uh, the bigger la- larger picture of the election of course would be uh, Karunanidhi versus Jayalalitha which of course the nation would be hooked to and perhaps even uh, internationally uh, but it's interesting and relevantly so that I point out a little uh, piece of information that uh, uh, I'd like to share at this stage there is a survey that was conducted by students uh, studying in a california based university it was a phd course that they're pursuing uh, on indian politics and according to their uh, research uh, it says that 93% of political parties in india at the time of candidate fielding now the subject that they chose was of course patterns in candidate fielding and apparently according to them 93% of political parties in india believe in uh, not fielding a strong candidate candidate at a place where they know that a uh, uh, that uh, uh, either the chief minister or the chief of uh, the opposition is going to be fielding perhaps uh, because of the fear factor or maybe because of the simple logic that whatever is a stronghold for uh, uh, let's say the ruling camp is not necessarily a stronghold of uh, the rival camp and vice versa so that seems to be interesting and more relevantly so but then what's interesting in this time around uh, election in tamil nadu is of course the fact that in these uh, key constituencies where the heavyweights are contesting uh the youth necessarily uh, are uh, uh, pitted against these uh, major uh, dravidian the dravidian majors for instance uh, let's say anand who spoke to us exclusively his age really is amma's experience in politics but uh, he would want to do what uh, uh, what uh, uh, sogavanam did in 1996 but the interesting contest is going to be in tiruvarur where of course it is homecoming for the chief minister but then uh, kodavasal rajendra a heavyweight and a strong poli- uh, a strong ai dmk district secretary of tiruvarur is going to be fielding against him uh, this person uh, known to uh, sort of uh, according to uh, ai dmk sources known to uh, know the pulse of the people of course it will be a tough fight uh, it will be interesting to see whether he brings the margin down considerably considering tiruvarur of course uh, has seen a lot of uh, development during karunanidhi uh, d- uh, as a, as the chief minister but has also seen a lot of anti incumbency particularly so because there's a left population in tiruvarur which again is not with the dmk camp this time around all right that that's very interesting that you pointed out that survey or that research uh, uh, radhika also let's go across to lokpriya now lokpriya you are right there at the dmk headquarters anna ariwaliam when the list was read out last week 
Now, what was the response when Anand's name was mentioned as a candidate from Sri Rangam? Well, Sanjay, the mood was extremely upbeat over there. The entire party workers were very, very happy hearing Anand's name because uh, the party. I spoke to some of the party cadres who had come down uh, from uh, Sri Rangam or Trichy uh, rather, and they were very happy that a first-time candidate is being fielded, and especially Anand because he is someone who is part of the DMK's youth wing and uh, sources close to the DMK camp say uh, that the Stalin was extremely happy with the way he was working, with the way he has been moulded as a DMK party cadre, and that's why he was been given the ticket because the chief minister. As well as the top brass of the DMK were extremely happy with the way he worked. So the party cadres were also extremely happy, considering the fact that it's, he's a first-time first nominee, and they are very, very sure that he will uh, bring in or uh, a large number of votes and also probably reduce the margin of votes if and when uh, Jayalalitha wins, Sanjay. All right, let's ask him directly, uh, Anand. In the Togodi, la, ungalke ke vetri vaipu abdi irke ille unmay solupana tolvi nechya ma. வெற்றி வாய்ப்பு பிரகாசமாக இருக்குது நிச்சயமாக வெற்றி பெறுவேன் கடும கடுமையாக உழைச்சிட்ருக்கேன் நான் கண்டிப்பாக ஜெயிப்பேன் நிச்சயமாக ஜெயிப்பேன் தலைவரோட சாதனை செய்த சாதனை செய்ய போகிற சாதனை இந்த சாதனை எனக்கு கண்டிப்பாக வெற்றி பெற செய்யும் வெரி காம்பேட்டிவ் மாற்றம் இருக்காது a very combative uh, and, and and confident uh, anand there we wish all the candidates in fact good luck here but uh, going back to radhika radhika some of our closest big contests uh, if our viewers would remember 1980 when mr karunanidhi defeated uh, dr h v hande and ananaga by just 699 votes and again in 1991 after the rajiv gandhi assassination mr karunanidhi had a ma margin of uh, just about 350 votes against subu of the congress but now that you know the concept of safe seats has cropped up That's correct. In fact, uh, very interestingly pointed out by you, I was uh, going to refer to 1980. Uh, let's take, for example, all top uh, leaders from the state. Let's take uh, Karunanidhi, for instance. He goes for a safe seat, Tiruvarur. Uh, Sri Rangam, which, uh, of course, uh, Jayalalitha uh, is almost, uh, uh, Sri Rangam, which is almost second home to Jayalalitha, has gone back to, uh, to that place where there is a considerable share of Iyengar population. Vijay Kant, who doesn't know uh, till today who his opponent is going to be, has gone for this very safe seat, although touted to be this game changer, the king maker, uh, has again gone for a safe seat, Rishi Vandiyam, uh, which again has a considerable population of farmers in that very area so it's it's very clear from the recent uh, victories and the defeats that we have seen that the margins really has has actually been a touch and go no matter how big they are whether they're presidents or uh, chief of their respective parties and so uh, it, it is very evident uh, that these top leaders are now touting to go for safe seats even if it means uh, uh, even if it means uh, 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 some kind of complacence when it comes to their winning from that particular seat All right, uh, Radhika. It's interesting that you point out that uh, the Iyengar uh, population there in the Iyengar population in Sri Rangam uh, caste plays a very important role in in Tamil Nadu's electoral politics. There's also uh, an Iyer population there, and given uh, what happened in the past, uh, the action against the Kanchi Shankaracharya, how do you think that the Iyer vote uh, bank there will work? Uh, perhaps uh, by default in favour of uh, an Anand. Well, going by uh, caste politics, of course, it plays a huge factor in Indian politics, and all of us know that uh, it is an open secret. But uh, going by uh, a lot of uh, what skeptics read into, what political pundits read into, apparently the Iyer population is known to be a very learned and a very educated and a well-aware uh, population or a community. Now, given the fact that the 2G scam has been there over the last few years. Uh, political pundits would read this as a way of the ayers to rem remember people's memory is very short it's a short term memory uh, that they remember they remember the best thing that uh, the political le leader did for the day or perhaps just about yesterday so perhaps the 2g scam since the ayer population is touted to be a very learned population a very well aware population that perhaps could go against the dmk uh, but it's not uh, uh, it's not uh, uh, likely that people would take it lightly that uh, jayalalitha uh, if and when whenever she's been in power she's uh, done what she believes was the right thing to do uh, whether it meant political motives or whether it meant administrative uh, uh, d decisions that she has taken so the kanchi seer uh, issue of course uh, which has been on the back burner considering the case itself has almost fallen flat with uh, uh, with witnesses turning hostile would perhaps be put on the back burner considering the 2g scam today continues to dominate headlines for more than 3 months now nationally and internationally all right uh, one final question to lokpriya lokpriya now being pitted against amma is this anand's only claim to fame give us a little about the background of this young man 
Sanjay, uh, this Anand uh, uh, person is about 28 years old and he's an ordinary farmer's son and he's a, a science graduate. He studied science from the nearby village. So a, a very, very humble and a modest person who is contesting for the first time in the elections. And he's been an active member of the DMK's youth wing and he's been, in fact, uh, going door-to-door -door campaigning, asking for people's vote. He's been campaigning based on his uh, leader's welfare measures that has been done and he's extremely up by, uh, upbeat about his chances and not exactly being bogged down by the pressure that he's contesting against an arch rival an extremely upbeat a dynamic young candidate who's ready to take the battle heads on sanjay all right uh, thank you very much lokpriya for joining us with your information also radhika for that excellent perspective and uh, anand also for in fact taking time off from his hectic campaign there but a uh, lot of uh, news coming up election otherwise uh, on this particular bulletin stay tuned we'll be back in a very short while